Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter and welcome once again to my guest, Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum. Once again, it's great to have you Thank here. You. Well, let's hear from the other side. There are a lot of Oregonians who believe our immigration laws should be enforced and that you should be enforcing them. We talked to a few of them, so let's listen to what they have to say. I'm sad about the protests. I'm all for immigration, but I want it to be legal. And I, I think that we have laws on the books that need to be enforced. My great grandparents were immigrants. They came through Ellis Island from Italy. And even back then they had, you know, rules that they had to follow. And I think legal immigration is, is what we need. How do you answer to people, Oregonians, there are 40% of Oregonians who voted for President Trump who support tougher immigration laws. And they think you as attorney general should be enforcing those laws. How do you respond to them? First of all, my, my um, grandparents came through Ellis Island as well. It was a lot easier for them to get through. I think they, the main problem then was an eye test that they had to pass. Uh, and some got sent back because they didn't pass the eye test, uh, the vision and the uh, infection test. Um, so, you know, all, almost all of us are, are you know, certainly uh, had relatives who were, were immigrants if we're not ourselves. Um, look, I don't have anything against the federal government enforcing the immigration laws. But I can tell you something, it is not the job of the state attorney general or anyone else in the state, the governor, the lo local law enforcement, to enforce federal immigration laws. And that's what the, apparently the, the U.S. attorney general, Jeff Sessions, wants us to do. My answer, sorry, that's not my job. Let's take a look at what's happening down uh, in southwest Portland, where you live on McAdam in that area. A lot of controversy surrounding the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. People have been camped outside the ICE office there protesting. They say they won't leave. They're protesting that family separation policy and the zero tolerance policy. Uh, the federal government moved in on Thursday, arrested some people to clear the way. Wednesday night, President Trump tweeted about that, saying that extremist politicians have called for the complete elimination of ICE. I wonder what your opinion is of what's going on down there at the ICE facility. Well, I haven't called for the elimination of ICE, but I will say that ICE has not been conducting themselves in a manner that is uh, appropriate for, uh, for our community or for any community. For example, there are instances, we've obtained a lot of records, which actually we had to ask for a FOIA. We had to make a FOIA request to get information about what ICE has been up to here in our state. And what we've learned is that they're literally hanging out outside of sensitive uh, buildings like hospitals, courthouses. We know they go into courthouses, schools, and they are making arrests and doing things that I believe to be uh, e either illegal or so close to the line that it is very upsetting to our community. So um, I don't have any objection to peaceful demonstrations, and that's what I understand for the most part is occurring at the ICE building, in, which is in my neighborhood. You uh, allude to this about uh, Oregon being a sanctuary state. What does that exactly mean? Well, I think some people have been a little bit confused about that. Um, Oregon has been a sanctuary state since the 1980s, and we've even strengthened our laws to some degree in the last uh, legislative session to ensure that people understand basically what it means is not quite what the U.S. Attorney General thinks it means, which is that we should have to cooperate. What it really means is that we don't have to cooperate. It means that the federal government should do its job and we have no obligation or responsibility to help them unless we choose to do so. We were kind of sad to say goodbye to our good friend here, Steve Novick here at KGW. Steve uh, has taken a job with your office, uh, working with your office. He could no longer continue with us. He represented the left in our left took right jab with Lars Larson. Let us know a little bit about what Steve's new role is. Well, you know, we are very busy in so many ways at the Oregon Department of Justice and on limited resources. As I told you earlier, we're trying to keep our, our expenses down but still be able to have a role in these major, especially some of the environmental cases, which are huge. The Environmental Protection Agency run by my former colleague, uh, former Attorney General Scott Pruitt, is uh, not doing us any favors in terms of what we used to have, which was a, a collaborative relationship with the Environmental Protection Agency. I, you know, I, the word protection had some meaning back uh, before 18 months ago. So bringing Steve in, is uh, getting, first of all, a free a new attorney because he is actually being funded by a program at uh, New York, uh, at, at NYU, back in New York. 
And so we're able to get the benefit of his incredible experience as a former United States Department of Justice environmental lawyer. And he's going to be helping us with uh, some of the cases that we just simply couldn't have weighed in on in quite the same way that we'll now be able to. Is this a new focus for you, for your, for your office, to protect the environment and challenging the Trump administration on some of these environmental policies? Well, it's not new uh, as of the last two years, uh, but I guess you could say, you know, no. We have had a robust environmental uh, core group. Our natural resources and environment section has been working uh, for decades, especially on our Superfund problems with our river. And we have, uh, we represent, of course, all the state agencies that are involved with the environment, the Department of Environmental Quality, uh, all of the, the Department of, of Lands, all of the uh, agencies that try to protect our air and our water and our people. And so we, it is nothing new for us, but we will be able to offer more. We'll be able to put some more, uh, let's put it this way, uh, time and manpower into these cases than perhaps we would have before we got Steve. So we're happy to have him we have join a, our team. About a minute left, but are there any other actions? Sorry, by the way, to take him away from uh, the show. I know, we're going to miss him. <laughs> about a minute left, but we did want to know about any other actions you might be taking challenging the government. You mentioned the 2020 census. Yes, well, we've joined the lawsuit that is challenging the addition of the citizenship question to the census. We believe that that's a uh, violation of the enumeration clause of the United States Constitution. There needs to be an accurate count of all the people, all the people, not just the ones that choose to and are comfortable with uh, filling out the forms. And frankly, if you put a citizenship question on the census, it's a chilling effect on so many of our wonderful residents here in the state of Oregon. So you don't think we need get an that accurate count if that question is on there? If you don't have an accurate count, then you don't have uh, the ability to uh, obtain the kinds of help that you need from the federal government, say for Medicaid funding and other types of, of uh, funding that taxpayers are very concerned about. Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum, thank you so much for joining us here on Straight Talk. I hope you will come back and talk about some of the other things that you're working on in your office. Anytime. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching Straight Talk airs every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and Sundays at 6.30 p.m right after NBC Nightly News. Join me next week when my guest is Oregon Senator Ron Wyden. We'll see you then for Straight Talk.